Hey everybody, this is the GoTo family from Hanoi, Vietnam. We're in the capital of this bustling country. Today we're going on a street food tour of the old quarters of Hanoi. So this is gonna be action packed. It's loaded with street food. You never know what you're gonna find. It's basically on every single corner. So today it's all about the food. Let's do it. Taking us on the Hanoi street food tour of the old quarters today yeah. is my friend yeah. here. Hello, so, yeah. So, I am Ha, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I am one of the foodie guy in Hanoi. I did two tours seven years ago. What is the name of this place where we're at yeah. right now? Also, it's like the name Bánh Cuốn Thanh Vân. Bánh Cuốn is the name of the food. It means rice pancake. But nice Thanh Vân is the name of the owner, the founder. Okay. Okay. It's like one of the best one in okay. Hanoi. It's 45 year, it's, uh, year experience. And this is a popular food for breakfast? For... It's actually, it's common also breakfast in Vietnam. But okay. we can eat that also for lunch and dinner too. Okay. Anyway, it's not heavy meal. You know? It's yeah. not heavy. Yeah. Yeah. This is a steamed rice pancake. This has pork and mushrooms inside. Now what they do is they top it with this crispy onion and also this shrimp kind of powder. The uh, rice pancake kind of looks like, uh, it, it looks a little bit like uh, like a very soft dumpling. So here it is. You like it? Yeah. It Let's just try good. it without the sauce to get really a taste for all the flavors that are in there. That is just so, so good. Wow. The texture on that rice pancake, that is just so soft. That is just beautiful. Just really, really beautiful. I really dig the inside, the pork and the mushroom mixture. Really, really good. And uh, I really dig the onions and the shrimp powder on the outside. It adds a bit of saltiness, a little bit of crunch. But that is really, really sweet. What is this that we got here? Yeah. <laughs> also, yeah, also another uh, spicy option also for rice pancake in Vietnam for the dipping sauce. Normally also chili and pepper, black pepper, but we have insect. This is supposed to enhance the flavor. It's supposed to add a little bit of kick, a little bit of spice to it. So uh, as you can see, well, before, before eating it, you're not going to eat the whole bug. So don't worry about it. What you do is you cut off the wings, uh, you cut off the tail, you cut off the little creepy crawlers, and then you cut the water bug into a couple of pieces, then you sprinkle it in the sauce here, and then we're gonna use that as, as a dipping sauce for our rice pancake. Let's put it in to get the flavor. Let's yeah. get that out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I did take a little piece of it by accident. So the, the sauce itself is, is quite good. It's quite refreshing, quite aromatic. It's a little sweet. Actually, it tastes nothing like you would expect it to taste. It's really, really, really quite fragrant and, and quite, quite tasty, I gotta say. So I just tried the bug. Honestly, it's not that bad. It's like this sweet, citrusy taste. Like, it kind of tastes like a fruit you would find like fresh off a tree or something like that. It's weird, right? It's really not that bad. Honestly, if you, no one told you it was there, you'd be like, yeah, whatever. It's a pretty good like citrusy kind of dip. Maybe that's what they have to do, not tell anyone, and then everyone's going to get on board for loving it. All right, so next up, we're going to try this place called Bumbo Hue. And uh, what this place does is they make this, uh, this noodle soup in the Hue style, which is different than the Hanoian style because they use pineapple and lemongrass to flavor the soup. So this is just basically a small spot, just a, a, a very uh, you know family-oriented restaurant, a little hole in the wall basically. And uh, you see the kitchen, the stands, everything is in this very small area. The thing about Bumbo Hue or uh, Hue soup in general is that they use a lot of lemongrass to flavor the soup and you can definitely smell the aromatics coming from that lemongrass 
as you walk into here, it really kicks you in the face. It gives you a nice, uh, you know, nice little kick, nice little whiff of, of freshness, which I really like. So we got two different kinds of soups. We got one that's the special, which is uh, beef, as well as uh, beef meatballs. And we have one that has uh, pork feet, and it also has blood sausage. So first off, let's just taste the broth here. You make that with the dry? Mmm. Mmm. That, that is quite good. That is quite tasty. It's, uh, it's quite light. It's a, it's a very beefy broth, I have to say. It's beefy and lemongrassy. It's hearty in a light way. It's almost like a comfort food kind of broth. Oh, these, these pork feet are bony. All right, look at that. And you can see how fat the pork feet are. That's gonna have a lot of flavor. It's gonna be a little chewy, even a little slimy. Straight up. Um, that is pure fat. I don't mind it, but it's not for everybody. It's pure fat. I personally like generally like pork skin and pork fat to be crispy or to be barbecued. But that gives a lot of flavor to the soup. Oh boy. Now I'm not a huge fan of blood sausage. Uh, you can see just how it's it's brown, it's it's very soft, it's also very slimy. Uh, it just it looks like it's gonna be packed full of, uh, of, of very awfully flavors. Try it out. Mm. It's actually really, really soft. Almost crumbles in your mouth. And it might look, honestly, it might look very unappetizing, but the lemongrass flavor is really absorbed well in there. It's almost like a tofu, how it absorbs the flavor. Okay, so Daniel just informed me I'm having the special one. And essentially, the special one is for Westerners, like the gross things. Well, I don't know if they're typically gross, but maybe gross for some Westerners. Depends on how adventurous you are. So his had uh, the feet in it. It had some cow blood. It had um, some... It, was there blood sausage in that? Yeah, it's, it's a cow blood sausage. Okay, so this one just has like a meatball, like a beef meatball in it. And it has the shaved beef. So let's give it a taste. It's really good. It's not funky at all. It kind of tastes like a brisket. It's an. It's maybe slightly more tender than a brisket. Um, but if you had to have something that you were used to eating, you would associate with it a brisket. And the sauce is uh, not spicy at all. It has a slight pepper taste, but more of like a red pepper taste than like a black pepper taste. And the noodles absorb all the sauce and really give it a really full overall taste. Now we're at Chuan Chuan. This is another spot in the old quarter. So at Chuan Chuan right here, they make Vietnamese beef barbecue. So very similar to Korean barbecue. I believe you have a stove that you can cook your beef in front of you so you become the chef as well as the patron here. So the sauce here is made from basically kumquat which is like a lime kind of that you kind of squeeze into a little container of uh, sea salt, sugar, pepper as well as maybe a bit of chili. So it goes super well with the barbecued beef that you can just see is just sizzling right there with the veggies, with the onions, with the okra. Uh, with the tomato that we have in there as well, as well as with the aubergine, so this looks great. Mmm. Whoa. Wow. That sauce is just so packed with flavor. And it's quite salty and salty in a citrusy kind of way from that kumquat and the beef is just cooked very nicely very flavorful very tender still just a little crunchy mm. that's a great sauce So you, 
you can see the beautiful golden kind of brownish color of these fried rice pancakes and and that's caused by the turmeric now as we can see there's only one left that's because the kids have already started digging in but what we're gonna do is we're gonna scoop up this fried rice pancake and we're gonna put it on our rice paper right here and this rice paper is made by drying layers of, of rice and it creates this this paper here so we're gonna add some greens we're gonna add some lettuce right here and uh, maybe some mint in there and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll it so here we go we're gonna roll it like that and you can just feel how thin this rice paper is, and it really does feel like paper, I gotta say. So here we go. Just remove the extra. And here is the finished product. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. So it's quite nice, there's a mixture of flavors and of textures here. So it goes from soft with the rice paper, that's really quite soft, quite papery like. Also the uh, fried rice pancake is, is kind of soft, uh, it has a little bit of a spring, a little crunchy, but a lot of the crunch comes from those fried onions which are basically a hallmark of Hanoian cuisine and Vietnamese cuisine here. Uh, but you find them everywhere, uh, they go on many things and they are delicious, add a lot of texture, a lot of flavor as well. Alright, so next up we are going to a spot that serves bún cha. Bún cha of course is a delicious salad or soups kind of salad from the Hanoi area. So you find this everywhere, every place has its own kind of recipe that they make. So usually what it is, it's a light broth that's kind of sweet, uh, unlike a pho, which is not sweet at all. So these noodles are sour. This is uh, what makes the bún cha, the bún cha, is that they use fermented rice to make the noodles. In the soup, which is not really a soup, it's more like a dipping sauce, you can just smell the aromas, you smell the garlic, you smell that kind of sourness, you, you smell that kind of sweet. It's just pack full of fragrance. So what they do is they include pork belly and uh, pork meatballs in here. So let's try the pork belly. Mmm. Oh, that's so smoky. That's like smoky and sweet bacon right there. And you can taste the, um, the smoke from the charcoal. That's quite delicious. It's quite fatty though. Okay, next up we're trying a Vietnamese papaya salad. So papaya salad, definitely something popular in Southeast Asia. Maybe a lot of people think about it as a Thai food, but they definitely make their own here in Vietnam and there are some differences. But let's take a look at this. This is the beauty of a dish. So you can see the papaya at the bottom. It looks like noodles, but it's not, it's papaya. And you can see uh, it comes with like beef jerky, like dried beef uh, on the outside. And it also comes with these nice chunks of barbecued beef as well. So uh, for Thai papaya salad, it usually comes in a fish sauce, but right here it's a mixture of soy sauce, uh, rice vinegar, some sugar, and some salt as well. But it's not a fish sauce base, so it's gonna taste a little different. Mm. They're just so fragrant. Mm. Let's try it now with a bit of that beef jerky and some of that barbecue beef. The beef jerky, it's not very salty. It's, it's actually more sweet than anything. I like the combination of the two. The barbecued pork, a little cruncher, a little meatier, a little beefier. The beef jerky is actually quite soft. It's not very chewy at all. It kind of dissolves and melts in your mouth. You combine it all with the crunchiness of the papaya salad and the very fragrant sauce, that's a very nice and refreshing salad. Don't forget to subscribe for more content, guys. Don't forget to hit that like button and also hit that notification bell so you get access to our videos as soon as we upload them. We're going to one last stop. We're going to savor a traditional Vietnamese specialty to top everything off. 
Wait till you see it. So we're at Cafe Jiang. This spot is crazy packed, crazy bustling. You never expect it from the outside because you come to this little narrow lane. But once you're inside and you come to the second floor, it's just dreaming with people. It's crazy packed. So this is the spot that invented the original egg coffee right here. And then it took off like wildfire. Egg coffee basically it tastes like a tiramisu. That's the best way I can explain it. It tastes like a dessert. It's kind of like really eggy, almost custardy, quite sweet and quite cocoa-y. Just like a tiramisu layered kind of like that. It's really good. It packs quite the eggy punch. It's quite coffee-ish. So it's really delicious. All right, let's try it. Mm. That egg foam is just so thick and sweet really thick and sweet that's delicious usually you have this foam that's very watery but that foam is just so so thick it's so sweet so delicious it's custard like in fact it kind of is a custard just look at that and you have all the coffee at the bottom you can get just more egg cream to come to your table just like we got right here so you can see we got the egg cream right here for the kids. Okay, so this is the end of our food tour of the old quarters of Hanoi, Vietnam. This was a food pack day. So a big thank you to my friend Ha from Ha Food Tours yeah. for showing us some of these unique spots in Hanoi. It was a blast. I hope you guys had a blast. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos. Don't forget to hit that like button as well as the bell for more notifications. Yeah. All right, this is it for us. We'll see you on the next one.